Welcome to worship here at Grace Lutheran Church as we celebrate Palm Sunday. While we continue to be separated for the health and well-being of our neighbors, we are so glad that you could join us today. For as long as we are apart, we have every intention of continuing to worship together through whatever means are available to us. Watch our Facebook page and our website for more ways to stay connected and to worship together. And we'll also continue to be on the radio every Sunday morning. We're gonna stick with this until all of this is over and we are able to be together once again in more than just spirit. Today we worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To the one who comes in glory, save us, O God. To the one who comes in humility, save us, O God. To the one who sacrifices all, Save us, O God. We confess our sins before God and one another. Merciful God, forgive us, for we have fallen short of your vision for humanity. We have put ourselves before others, ignored the vulnerable, and forgotten you altogether. We have missed the point of your kingdom. Have mercy on us. For Jesus' sake, amen. Children, you are not forgotten. Jesus sees your, your weaknesses, your struggles, and sees through all of that to your true identity. Beloved child of God, you are made whole simply by seeking forgiveness. God, who is rich in mercy, loved you even while you were dead in sin and has made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. Receive the Lord's pardon and believe that it is true. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, your sins are forgiven. Amen.
Let us pray. O God, you give us the king we need. May we follow where he leads, even when it is not where we want to go. We praise you for redeeming the world through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Today we remember how he entered Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed Messiah and King by those who spread garments and branches along his way. Grant us grace to follow our Lord in the way of the cross, so that joined to his death and resurrection, we enter into life with you. Through that same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading for today comes from Psalm 118, verses 25 through 29. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. Bind the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God. I will give thanks to you. You are my God. I will extol you. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. When the people of Israel called for Jesus to be their king, they could not have imagined what that would look like. That Jesus had not come to deliver a single nation from political oppression, but instead to save the world from sin and death. Jesus was not only king over Israel, but king over all. Our focus scripture for today is found in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 11, verses 1 through 11, and chapter 14, verses 3 to 9. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethpage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it, and if anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this. The Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. And as they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. And then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. And then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. And while he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar, a very costly ointment of nard. And she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some were there who said to one another in anger, why was this ointment wasted in this way? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and the money given to the poor. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me. For you always have the poor with you. And you can show kindness to them whenever you wish. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. And now our worship continues from Ben's living room with a message for our youngest listeners. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to my living room. This is our children's time of worship, and we're going to sing a song. And I've also sent out the, a coloring sheet for a poem to be colored. And I've got one hanging here from my guitar that I've colored and cut out. And maybe some of you at home have that 
this morning. So that will come in handy here during the song. But we're talking about Palm Sunday. It's Palm Sunday right now. It's the start of Holy Week. And Palm Sunday, we remember when Jesus rode, was riding into Jerusalem. And the people there were so excited to see him. They laid their clothes on the ground for a smooth path for Jesus. They laid palms on the ground for him to, to ride in on. And they shouted. They shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest. And so I'd like to sing a song with you. And the chorus goes like this. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King of Kings. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King. So during that chorus, if you have the, your palms, I'd like you to pick them up and wave them in the air and sing that chorus along with me. So here we go, we'll sing the whole song. Give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning. Give me oil in my lamp, I pray. Give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning, burning, burning. Keep me burning till the break of day. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King of Kings. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to Sugar in my left side, God is cool. Yeah, sure, you betcha. Give me sugar, my left side, I pray. Give me sugar in my left side, God is cool. Yeah, sure, you betcha. It's cool till the break of day. excited and they were shouting Hosanna they were so excited to see Jesus coming in and so what they did is they lined the streets with their clothes so talk to your parents what you think it would be like to see Jesus coming in and walking on your clothes what would you think of that it'd be crazy but that's what they did then and so they lined it with their cloaks so what I want to do is while my wife's at work right now I want to empty the closets and put all our clothes out on the floor. And then we'll take a walk around the house and see what it's like ourselves. So come with me. We're going to go on a little walk. And so what I did is I I got some of the clothes out and I've lined it on the, on the floor. So we're going to jump over here. And we're going to get on there. And we're going to walk. I got some coats out of the closet. There's my wife's coat. Don't tell her. I got some of my polos out. Sweatshirts. We're coming into the dining room now. I've got my Christmas sweater. Coming into the kitchen, I've got some t-shirts, some twins jerseys, some sweatshirts. We keep coming around back to the back hallway. So my kids helped out. They got out some of their clothes. We're walking on those. And there you go. 
We're back in the living room. So it's Palm Sunday, just the start of Holy Week. Pray that you have a great day, and it's just wonderful for everybody. Color those palms, wave them in the air, send me pictures of you holding your palms, singing the songs. I'd love to see that. Right now, though, I got to get this mess cleaned up before my wife gets home. So we'll see y'all. Have a great week. Because you are forsaken, I'm accepted. You were condemned. I'm alive and well. The Spirit is within me because you died and rose again. I'm forgiven. Because you were forsaken, I'm accepted, you were condemned, I'm alive and well, the Spirit is within me, because you died and rose again. Sisters and brothers in Christ, grace and peace to you today and always from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is King of all things, but most importantly, who is King of our hearts. 
Palm Sunday is usually such a joyful time in the church. We get to do all these fun things, like say Hosanna a bunch of times. We get to wave some branches around, and it's one of the few times when we're actually encouraged to shout in church. This year we might be shouting, but it's more likely that it's across the yard to our closest neighbor to hold a conversation. Got to keep that social distancing strong. This text is also right up there in the ranks of familiar stories. Jesus comes to town and everyone is excited to see him. There is this donkey or a colt, the branches and coats being laid down in the streets. It's a fun story, but there's actually a lot going on here too. This story, it echoes another one in the Bible. You see, when Jesus asks for a young colt, it was more than just an act of humility. Jesus chose this mount on purpose, and the reason was he wanted to tell people exactly who he is. He is the true king chosen by God. The people of Jerusalem, they would have understood that too. They had been waiting for a king, for a Messiah, who would set things right and fix everything that they had lost. They were waiting for a king like David to return and deliver them from the hands of the Roman Empire, to establish a throne in Jerusalem and to make things right again. And now here comes Jesus riding into town on a donkey, this Jesus that everyone had heard about, healing the sick, casting out demons, raising the dead. And he rode into town the same way that King David had done so long ago. When David was king, there was a rebellion, and he was driven out of town. Eventually, he returned to Jerusalem riding on a donkey. And the first thing he does when he gets back to town is he goes to his house to set everything into order. Jesus now comes to town again riding on a donkey. And the first thing he does when he gets to town is he goes to his father's house to make sure that everything is in order. This simple story has layers of meaning to it, and Jesus knew that he would be sending a message. The problem then is, what kind of king are we waiting for? We too might be longing for a return to the normalcy of life right about now as we face a pandemic with a declining economy. There is this scarcity mindset that many of us have never had to feel before. We want things to go back to the way that they were. In so many ways, this Jesus who can heal the sick, who can make things right, God's promise for deliverance, well, he seems exactly like what we need. God promises deliverance, but how long do we have to wait? We might cling to this idea of a God who is going to wipe away our disease, end our economic hardships, save us from the stress of this new world that we live in, this promise of a return to normal, but that is not the God and King that comes to us in Jesus. Instead, he comes to build a kingdom that exists in the midst of the world's best attempts to destroy it. Where there is hurt, where there is brokenness, there also is the kingdom of God. The living Christ is with us, saying this is not the end. This does not define you. In his explanation of the first commandment, Martin Luther says, show me that thing in which you trust, and that, I say to you, is your God. And what he means is whatever it is you're putting your hope and your trust in, whatever it is you think makes your life worth living, that's what you're worshiping. That's what you believe in. And the people of Israel, they were putting their faith in a human king, in a rebellion, in a return to the way that things were before. But that's not what Jesus had come for. And we too sometimes want the Jesus that rewards us for doing good things. We want the Jesus who brings prosperity to the people who believe in him. Like those people who laid down their branches in the street that day, we're hoping that Jesus is going to come and change everything for the better. Give us a chance to start over where finally things are going to go our way. But Jesus came to dispel the ideas of what kind of king God would be. And instead, Jesus establishes his kingdom at any cost, even the cost of his own life for the sake of yours so that you can truly live. 
when we start to worry that Jesus isn't doing things our way, Jesus says, trust in me, follow me, I am the way. And now in the midst of this pandemic, unlike anything most of us have experienced, Jesus' kingdom is taking shape, not in the ways of our suffering being erased, not in the ways of all of the terrible things just being wiped away, but in the ways that Jesus is working through you to bring hope in the middle of it all, in the ways that you are learning to trust in him to lead us through. It's not our coats that he wants laid down, but our very selves. We are invited to get our hands dirty, to pick up our cross and to follow him, to proclaim who is our king in the midst of the muck of life, and to trust ultimately that we are in his hands. Jesus welcomes us into the kingdom of God where the gates are already wide open to embrace you. The kingdom that breaks into the world around us as God works in, with, and through you to change your hearts, to bring forth a parade of good works in response to God's love. This kingdom, it appears as a never-ending procession of palm branches laid down in response to Jesus coming and living among us as we are transformed from within by God's amazing love as we share that same love with others. When we place our hopes and our fears in Jesus' hands and we simply follow, Jesus builds a kingdom in our midst where our shouts of Hosanna are the ways that we are living and working to serve others, caring for our neighbors in the ways that we demonstrate that Jesus is our king in more than words, but in our hearts. And in him, we are set free from the burden of needing to make everything right. We are set free to love God and to follow wherever this road leads. There are things that we cannot change in this world. But we have the assurance that our king is going to lead us through to the other side. God's kingdom is here. Hosanna in the highest. Thanks be to God. His hands were calloused. Oh, I am sure of that. Years of nails and hammers with his father And his hands were dirty I know they must have been The times he healed blind eyes with mud and water
Together with the whole church, let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, and on the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now we pray for the church, the world, and for all those in need. As people once raised palms, so we raise our song and prayers to you, O Lord, as we follow throughout this crucial week. Assure us that you are always with us and that your promises are true. A donkey bore the weight of the world's deliverance. Show us the value of humble things. Teach us your kingdom's logic-defying order so that we might care for our neighbors who do not have a home in which to take shelter right now, so that we might seek solutions that would bring justice to all of your children, regardless of social or economic divisions. Even in the midst of anticipated sorrow, there is celebration. Send us joy in all things so that we might never run out of reasons to praise your name. Be with all of those who have lost their role, their function, or ability. For those who fear they no longer have a purpose as they once did. Transform our reality into something we never could have imagined. Send your healing to those whom we name in our hearts right now. We also pray today for Bill, LaDonna, Randall, Lauren, Margaret, Renee, Dick, Vi, Robin, David, and Andrew. You kept your dear ones close during your last week, O Lord. Join us all as one fellowship of witness to your faithfulness, both living and departed. Accept our prayers and hear our cries when we call to you. We ask all of these things in the mercy of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And I know that so many of you immediately said, and also with you, and so again, I invite you to share a sign of peace with someone who is next to you, but also reach out to someone who you are not able to be with today. Send them a quick text message, an email, or write them a letter. Let them know that you are thinking about them and that none of us are alone in this. Our worship continues today with our offering, and we realize that our current reality is difficult for some and it changes our patterns of giving. And for others, 
there is still this desire to support the church, and they're unsure of just how to do that. And so if you want to make a donation to support the mission and ministry of Grace Lutheran Church, you can start by going to our website at www.gracemankato.com give. And there you're going to find instructions on how to make a one-time donation or how you can sign up for regular online giving, whichever you feel called to do. And know that it's because of the generosity of people just like you that we are able to reach out and serve our community by opening our doors to outside organizations so that they can meet here and run their programs in our building, so that we can feed our neighbors and reach out to the community in so many other ways. Thank you for your support. We lay our gifts and our hearts upon your table in gratitude and thanksgiving. May all the world know your gentle mercy and that you have come to make all things new. In Jesus' name, amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, whose suffering and death gave salvation to all, you gather your people around the tree of the cross, transforming death into life and so with all of the choirs of angels, with all of the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven. We praise your name and join in their unending are forced to be apart, we see most clearly the gift that God has given us in the presence of one another. So too the body of Christ is the gift of Jesus' presence on earth, living and working through you, the church, and all believers. It is comforting to have reminders of that promised presence, especially when we are unable to gather as the body of Christ at this time. 
And so in the hope that we might all remember Christ's promise to be with us in baptism, in the church, and in the sacrament of Holy Communion today, hear these words and remember that Christ is with you now and forever. Hear now how on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. And after giving thanks, he gave it saying, take and drink. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it for the remembrance of me. And so remembering, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Whether in stable or uncertain times, know that you belong to our Lord and our King, Jesus Christ. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. There is a path to travel, a way to walk, a cross to lift, and a burden to carry. Let us go, let us follow, let us walk with Christ. There is a story to hear, a horror to witness, a revelation to experience, and a sorrow to bear. Let us take heed, let us see, 
Let us walk with Christ. There is a sacrifice to be made, a gift to honor, a death to undergo, and a life to live. Let us accept. Let us share. Let us walk with Christ. Go, following Jesus to the cross, fulfilling God's mission for us. Through God's abundant love, we will live and work to serve others. Thanks be to God. Thanks again for joining us. We'll see you next time. Yep.